In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We reflect this morning on gratitude, thankfulness, gratitude to God as we hear that our Lord expects gratitude. Where are the nine? Ten lepers were cured and only one comes to give thanks to God. Let us first see what for we should give thanks to God, then how best to give thanks, and then why the precious blood of our Lord is our supreme thanksgiving. First, what should we thank God for? The more obvious is for healing, for when our petitions are heard, when our problems are solved. This can be very practical, health, money, relationship, to find a job. Second, we give thanks to God, perhaps less obviously, for life natural and supernatural. We should thank God for our sheer physical existence, bearing in mind that God did not need us. He is supremely fulfilled as Holy Trinity, God was under no necessity to create anything, not even us, and yet he did so gratuitously. For so many goods God gave us, we want to thank him, a family, a country, friends, skills, a trade, Third, the saints also give thanks to God for yet another kind of favors. Which favors? They are the crosses. The saints thank God for unfair trials, for hardship, for unjust opposition. They thank God for being slandered, vilified, fined, sacked, kicked out, and even imprisoned or killed. Why? Why give thanks for those? Because these things are God-given opportunities to deny ourselves, thus demonstrating more love for God and neighbor. Hardships endured with God, offered up with Jesus and through him, increased the life of grace in us. So we have seen briefly three types of goods for which we should give thanks to God, for problems solved and petitions answered, for mere existence, for sanctifying crosses. Second, how do we best give thanks to God? It's not difficult. We can give thanks to God, just like children hugging their father when they receive from him a birthday present. We then plainly tell God, thank you so much. That's quite simple. But gratitude spurs us to know better the author of the gift of favor. Because we see our desire met by him, we long to learn more about the person who is so thoughtful and attentive to our needs as to satisfy them, even anticipating them. Who is he? 
What does he like? What are his tastes, his expectations, or even his needs? In other words, gratitude leads us to wish to reciprocate. We were shown attention, generosity, mercy. We wish to respond similarly as much as lies in us and befits God. With human beings, we think, what could I do that would please my father, my husband, my wife, my friend, after they were so generous, so helpful to me? With God, we seek to learn the holy will of God. And what is the will of God for us? It is our sanctification. God wants us to be holy. God wants us to be with him forever. And since God is holiness, we must become holy like he is holy. Thus, gratitude towards God is best expressed through sanctification. Every time, dear friends, we respond to God's promptings or resolve to abide by God's law, we express gratitude. But this is made possible for us nowhere better than in one very particular occasion. What occasion? The occasion is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. In the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the Lord Jesus, as a true man, surrenders to God the Father all that he is in loving and filial and sacrificial love. No one can express gratitude to God better than the Lord Jesus did on the cross. No one can express gratitude to God better than the Lord Jesus does at every Holy Mass. This is why Holy Mass is called the Eucharistic Sacrifice. The word Eucharistic means thanksgiving. At Holy Mass, then, we all unite with our head, the new Adam, our Lord, as he gave thanks to God on our behalf. Third, let us examine how this thanksgiving of ours is best achieved through the offering of the precious blood of the Lord. I will illustrate this point with the following example. I was watching a series about our Lord recently. Very little happened in that episode, apparently. All we were given to see were the apostles speaking about our Lord and how he had changed their lives. But Jesus is never to be seen in that episode. He is apparently under a tent healing the sick who queue up before him perhaps like the ten lepers of today's gospel. But we never see Jesus, neither are we given to witness the many miracles taking place. At the very end of the episode, at night, when everybody's gone, the apostles are quarreling around the fire when the Lord Jesus walks by, staggering, looking beyond exhaustion, as he would if depicted after his agony in the garden. He even has traces of blood on his face and garments. I found it a very powerful way of reminding us all that this healing power that comes out of the Lord is granted at a cost. What cost? his most precious blood. The cost 
paid by Jesus for restoring our bodies and souls to grace is his very life. In today's gospel, the ten lepers are cleansed, purified, in anticipation of the precious blood which Jesus will shed for the redemption of all men. And this applies even to our Blessed Lady. The Immaculate was preserved from the original sin in advance owing to the divine nature of her son and to the sorrowful passion he was to endure in his humanity. And this applies, dear friends, to you and me, to all of us sinners and penitents as well. Every time we receive the holy absolution in confession, its cleansing power directly stems from the passion and death of the Lord. Even before we push open the door into the confessional, the initial grace which helped us repent to be humbled and to trust in God's mercy, that grace already was merited for us by the most precious blood shed by the Lord Jesus in his passion and on the cross. In fact, there is not one single grace bestowed upon us fallen children of Adam and Eve which is not merited by the most painful shedding of the precious blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus the Savior. The more we learn this truth, the more we understand the true meaning of thanksgiving, of gratitude. Yes, we give thanks to God because all good things came to us through his passionate love for us, a love that led him to suffer excruciatingly during his passion, his crucifixion. In conclusion, dear friends, how much we want to share this saving truth, how much God wants us to share it. Please pray for these two young Muslim men outside Westminster Cathedral yesterday late afternoon. They wanted to know who Jesus is, but our group was running late. Our train had been cancelled and we just had time to reach the station for the last one. So I had no time to explain to these two young Muslim men about Jesus. I said, Jesus is truly God, the Savior, and he truly comes to save all men in his sacraments and especially in the Holy Eucharist. On the cross, Jesus saw these two Muslim men. He suffered for them as he suffered for us. Friends, we heard, we were taught, we were cleansed through holy baptism. We give thanks as we give thanks during this holy sacrifice of the Mass. Let us pray that the Father's will be done, that we may become holy as he is holy, that all those who as yet do not know him may encounter the sweet Savior and be saved. Let us, during this Mass, better than before, say, Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. O loving Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.